Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. We are here in St. Bart's today and we're going to talk today about the St. Bart's approach. This is arguably the most famous approach in the world. I would venture to guess that most flight simmers have tried it at one time or another. It's a difficult approach, but it's difficult in ways that are also not quite so obvious. I'm sure that plenty of people have tried it and gotten it down okay and said, hey, I nailed it. Good, let's go do something else. But if you're interested in really getting into the nitty gritty of this approach and really figuring out how to fly it well and fly it consistently, that's what we're here to do today. I've flown this approach probably, I don't know, 300 times, 500 times, not really sure. And I've also flown it in real life. And I have a good friend of mine who flies this approach in this exact airplane. Well, not this exact airplane, but the uh, the Britain Norman Islander, basically probably four to five days a week. And I've picked his brain about this approach quite a bit. So I think I've got some knowledge to share that you're not going to find somewhere else in, uh, in the flight sim community. So before we waste any more time, let's get to it. The obvious challenge is this part here. This is what pilots call the saddle. Now this is that V in the hill just preceding runway 10. In the sim, in the stock version, the hill is far too close to the threshold of runway 10 and it's far too steep. I'm using the Airworthy Designs St. Bart scenery which covers the entire island and this gives you a realistic depiction of what this approach looks like. You basically want to be at the level of the cross on the left-hand side as you go past it. And then you just ride the V in the slot on the hill right down to the threshold of runway 10. So that's kind of the most famous part of it. But what happens when you get here is largely determined by what you do before you get here. So the island right in front of us is called Sugarloaf, the little rock there at the bottom of the picture. And the one past it on the way towards the island is called Large Island. And then beyond that is St. Bart's. So you want to cross Sugarloaf here at 1,500 feet, fully configured and on speed. And this is where you start your descent into the island. This is also the visual reporting point when you're flying in if you're on VATSIM. So if you're on VATSIM flying into St. Bart's, you want to make a radio call from 10 miles out, and then you want to make a call from here and say Sugarloaf inbound. You want to cross Large Island at about 800 feet. This is the view closer in once we're over Large Island and you can clearly see the runway coming into view from this point. You can also see that it's angled slightly away from us. And there's a reason why you want to come in from this slightly angled approach rather than straight on. When you get here, starting to approach the shoreline, that's when you're really going to start seeing the one zero at the threshold of the runway. And this is the view as you're getting closer in. And what you want to do at this point is keep that 1-0 steady in its position in your windscreen. You don't want it moving up or moving down. You want, the, you want to keep that 1-0 steady where it is. And you can see as we get in closer, the angle gets reduced. It doesn't look nearly as an extreme an angle as you get closer in. And the reason why you want to be angled a little bit rather than come straight in is you can see if you come straight in, you've got to come in higher and at a much steeper angle to make it down. Planes with a beta prop mode like the uh, Twin Otter do it very, very regularly from dead straight on. And the reason they can do that is because they've got beta props. They can just chuck their throps, props into beta as soon as they touch down. They're going to touch down and come to a stop in a split second. With a piston plane, which is what I usually fly in here, you want the angle so you can so you can be a little bit lower and come down at less aggressive a less steeper angle through the saddle here here we are short final we've got the cross on the left you want to descend right at about the same altitude as you pass that and you want to chop the power 
before you get to the traffic circle. If you wait to the traffic circle or to kind of the grass slot down there in the saddle before you chop the power, you're you're you've waited too long. You're gonna get a, a kick. Now when you get over just past the traffic circle and just above that grass right there, if there's any wind at all, you're gonna get what's called the St. Bart's kick. And the St. Bart's kick is gonna lift the tail of your airplane up and push your nose down. And it's gonna basically just propel you forward. And so you need to be coming off the power before you get to the traffic circle. In terms of touching down, touching down on the numbers isn't the goal. The goal is to touch down by taxiway Charlie, which is the second taxiway down that you can see here. It's this one right here. You, the rule is your wheels have to be on the ground by Charlie or it's an automatic go around. Now, ideally you should be touching down somewhere between the runway numbers and these marks right here. That's kind of the sweet spot. Once you start getting past here, when I reach this point, what I'm looking at is my airspeed. If my airspeed is very, very low, I'm not worried about it. You know, if I'm in the Islander, if I'm going 60 knots, not worried about it. If I'm the Islander going 85 knots right here, I'm very worried about it. What you need to know and you need to be sure of is that you're slow enough that when you touch down, it's not going to take, you know, screeching brakes to get you to stop by the end of the runway. So you have to go around if you don't touch down by Charlie, but really what you want to do, if you're close to touching down and you're about this point, you want to monitor your airspeed, see how much momentum you have and how likely it is that you're going to be able to stop before the end of the runway. And this is the view from the beach at the 2-8 end of the runway. And this is the thing that most people don't understand about St. Bart's. And I didn't understand it until I was standing here for the first time in real life. This runway slopes all the way down from the threshold of 1-0 down to 2-8 and to the beach. It's not a slight angle. It really is angled quite dramatically down as you're coming down. So not only are you coming over that hill and landing, you're landing on a downhill surface that's sloping away from you. And to that last point, a downsloping runway gives you the visual illusion that you're lower than you are. So the tendency with a downsloping runway is to actually come in too high. Now you're gonna you're gonna see here as we move up, that runway looks flat, and it's very much not flat. So you you really have to be aware of this as you're coming in and make sure you've got your altitudes at Large Island and a good visual picture as you're coming over the threshold of the beach on your way in to make sure that you're not too high. So taking a look here at the reference charts, you can see a general overview of the airport and there is a special qualification for this airport. Not anybody can land here. People do it, uh, but they also do regular ramp checks at St. Bart. So if you do this in real life and you don't have the cert, they're going to bust you because they know who has it and who doesn't. And I've seen people get busted doing this who shouldn't have been doing it. You get a look here also in the overview. It talks about the, the terrain. It talks about the turbulence that you can encounter on the way into runway 10 in particular. And operations on this runway are prohibited if the crosswind is greater than 25 knots on a dry runway or 20 knots on a wet runway. And it talks about the downslope illusion that we mentioned earlier. So if we go here to the approach chart, you can see what we talked about, Sugarloaf, and coming in from this angle. They do have the earlier versions of this chart from JEP had this angle coming in. Now they tend to want to favor this direction, as I said, but people who've been landing here forever. Do it over Sugarloaf. There's a couple waypoints you want to be aware of. In particular, if you are coming in on VATSIM, there's Forshoe and there's Grouper. And then, of course, Sugarloaf we talked about. If we close this here, this is Forshoe. This is Grouper. The, the 
kind of small uh, little specks of islands right here. This is grouper. So if you're coming from St. Martin, generally speaking, you're going to be coming from this direction, and you're going to you're going to be asked by ATC to report grouper. If you're coming from Grand Cass or Anguilla from this direction, you're going to be asked to report Forshu on your way down. And as we get down here closer, you can see this is Sugarloaf, what we mentioned earlier. And this is Large Island here and closer. And so what you want to do to make sure that you're safe in the VFR corridor, if you're doing this VFR, you want to go between this island here off the off the northeast corner of St. Martin and St. Martin itself. Just come right down between here. Aim for Foreshoe. Come just to the... I, I come just off to the side here of Foreshoe. And then once you're past Foreshoe, you're aiming direct for Sugarloaf. And then you're making the turn from Sugarloaf inbound. All right, here we are in the airplane approaching Foreshoe. And you can see those islands right there, that's groupers. So we're coming from the northwest from Anguilla. So we want to just skirt the side of Horseshoe right here. And if you're on Batsim, this is when you'd want to make a radio call either, well, depending on what St. Martin. Uh, either Control or St. Martin Tower gave you, it would probably tell you to call Sugarloaf inbound. But if you're coming in VFR with no ATC, which technically you should be, um, you want to call St. Martin's Traffic, Anguilla 263, force you inbound runway 10. And then everybody knows where you are. So you can see that is Sugarloaf right out there in front of us. I'll wait to get a little bit closer before I start configuring. See, we're right at 1,500 feet, and now's a good time. And I want to be pretty aggressive about getting set up because I do want to be all set up by the time we get to Sugarloaf. Take a look off the right side there for any traffic, and you just want to pull the power back and maintain altitude. And now here we get under the 115 knots, and then we can put in our first notch of flaps. And keep that power out, keep that nose up. Looking around for traffic. Save it off there in the distance. And there you can see Sugarloaf. Not quite a left base, but it's pretty close. So we're there. We can put in that next notch of flaps. I want to get right to about 80 knots before I start doing anything here. Start seeing the runway come into view there off the left. Now, in my opinion, this is one of, the, one of the most difficult conditions to do this in. This is in basically windless, calm weather. And here you would say St. Bart's traffic, Anguilla 263, Sugarloaf inbound 10 St. Bart's. And you can see we're on that angle we talked about. You want 800 to 1,000 feet on the descent, but you also want to make sure that your airspeed doesn't pick up dramatically. So I want to bring some more power out, mixtures and props full forward. I want to make sure I'm at about 800 feet when I cross Large Island, which you can't really see, but you kind of get a feel for it. We're about there now. And I don't want the yoke I don't want the, uh, the the control forces completely trimmed out. I want to hold this yoke back in my lap just a little bit because what I want to do is once we get in the saddle here is be able to release the yoke and let the nose drop. You never want to push the nose down. You can 
see that one zero but you do want to be able to release the nose and let it drop we're looking good power out power out power out power is out now I can drop that nose hold it off just a little bit and that was pretty much uh, that was pretty much a flareless landing right there but not too too bad now what we're going to do is go do a couple and I'll show you what not to do alright here we are coming towards Sugarloaf let's bring the power back here and we'll get under 115 knots alright here we are coming toward Sugarloaf. Just holding that nose up to get the airspeed back into that white arc. Now what I want to do is show you what happens with that visual illusion that we talked about of being too low. So right now, gee, it feels like I'm too low. You know, because you can't even see the runway. So I'm not going to start descending yet. See how the airspeed right now is pretty good, but my vertical speed is only 300 feet a minute, 400 feet a minute. You can see the end of the runway is kind of right at the bottom of my windscreen. Now I start thinking, okay, that that's looking a little better. But now, all of a sudden, I'm going to make a much steeper descent to try and get in. Look at that descent, 1,500 feet. We're beyond the flap range now. And you still think, oh, we can make it, we can make it. Now look at that descent rate. 2,000 feet a minute. Oh, we can still make it. It's not so bad. It's not so bad. We can still make it. Then you pull the power out. Pull the nose up. Even if you get it down, there's no way you're going to make it before you wind up in the sand or the water. Alright, here we are again. We're coming up on Sugarloaf here. I've got one notch of flaps in. Good airspeed, theoretically. 1,500 feet, not looking too bad. But if you don't configure and get your airspeed under control before you get to Sugarloaf, it's going to be a challenge. So now, we got to turn. Got to start dropping altitude. Look at where that airspeed is. And what, that, what that's going to do is that nose is going to want to keep coming up, 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 up. So now, oh boy, we're at 120 knots got to bring the props forward now how do we get slowed down into flap range Ooh, it's not going to be easy and because we're going so fast we've got to descend a lot faster now we've got no chance on 110 knots powers all the way out altitude's not too bad but I never even got a chance to configure because the descent rate that you need to get down it just doesn't allow you to get down and slow down at the same time now the profile doesn't look too bad my power is completely out and watch what's going to happen when I try to round this out Ooh, it's not going to work it's not going to work I mean I'm still going 100 knots so we'll go power in and we'll go around and any departure or go around out of St. Bart's, you make an immediate left turn once you pass the end of the runway to a heading of 060. That's going to keep you clear pretty much everything here. And we'll now go around one more time. One more 
good approach and good landing so that you can see it. Come back in the power here to 25. Props to 25. I'm just going to leave that first notch of flaps in because I'm going to need it soon anyway and I'm in the white arc so it's no big deal. Beautiful view of St. Bart's. So if you're doing pattern, pattern work at St. Bart's, what you want to do is come out pretty much over top of this rock right here. And that's four shoot in front of us. Basically head for that. There's Sugarloaf. Once we get out past the end of the uh, the outcropping here, here in the uh, northwest corner, northeast corner of the island, and we'll just make that turn. So we're coming up on 1,500 feet. We're gonna bring the power back to 21 inches. Bring the props back to 21. I'm just going to leave that notch of flaps in because I'm going to have to put it in anyway. So we'll level ourselves off at 1,500 feet. Whenever you're doing pattern work, good trick is keep the notch of flaps in or if you've got to put the flaps up to take off, once you get 500 feet above the ground, just put that notch of flaps back in as you're climbing. You're going to be in flap speed. You're going to be okay there. And that flap speed is, or that flaps is going to help you just maintain your your good airspeed. So you're not going to speed up a whole lot and then have to slow down a whole lot. We'll make our left hand turn. You got a little shutter there from. Uh, frame gen mod. So you can always keep an eye on that that uh, 100, that's how you know where that runway is basically, you know, with respect to you, to your airplane. So here we are looking at Sugarloaf and when I've got Sugarloaf in my sights, I'm going to bring that power back to 1500 keep that nose up fuel pumps are on get right back into that white arc Sugarloaf is right in front of us now we're inside the white arc that knocks the flaps in and I'm going to pull the nose up maintain altitude being a little bit low at Sugarloaf is not a big deal. I'm, I'm happy that I'm at 80 knots. Being a little bit low at Sugarloaf is no big deal. I would say the max I would want to be, the max, maximum low, that is the minimum I'd want to be is about 1,300 feet. Coming back to 70 knots, but I'm not worried about that because I've got to start descending. So. We'll let the nose drop here a little bit. Start coming down. Airspeed is good. We'll go mixtures of props forward. And I am happy with my airspeed. 800 to 1,000 foot per minute descent. And you can see large island there as we made the turn. You can get a decent idea of where it is. We're roughly over it right now, so we might be a little bit high. But I can let the nose come down because I've got my airspeed where I need it. So I don't have too much energy. And now I'm just not going to let the end of that runway move up or down too much. Vertical speed is at 1,000, but my airspeed is only at 80, 82, so I can pull the nose up if I need to. See that one zero is right in that same spot in my windscreen the whole time. Power coming out. Power is all the way out. And just let it come down. Round it out. You want a nice firm touchdown. You don't want to mess around. 
down well before Charlie. Apply the brakes. And if you need to, once you get below the bottom of that white arc on the on the airspeed indicator, just pull that yoke back into your stomach. So what that does is get the elevator into the airflow and that helps let's call it aerodynamic braking and what we did right there that turnaround at the bottom of the runway that's called the victory lap let's take a look outside of the airplane and I'll show you when you pull that yoke all the way back see how that elevator comes up and there's no lift so what that does it does two things you've got no lift because you can't you don't have enough airspeed but pulling the nose pulling the nose up essentially what you're doing is putting more weight on the main wheels which is going to make your brakes more effective but it also gets the elevator out in the flow of air and helps to helps to slow the plane down just by getting in the airflow so that's a good trick if you just need a little bit more aerodynamic a little bit more braking um, but make sure you don't do it when the airspeed's up in here because if you've got enough airspeed you might go flying again so you got to be careful about that so that is the St. Bart's landing it's not difficult but you have to be disciplined you can't <laughs> One thing that I kind of discovered when I was doing my private pilot certificate is when you, the, the kind of the realization that gets you to the point where you can start making consistent landings is airspeed control. You know, you're always worried about your profile and your vertical speed and you'd be going 20 knots too fast and that's just not going to get the job done. And so I used to have this saying, that there are three keys to good landings airspeed control airspeed control and airspeed control and I really stand by that it's uh, it's very very important it's also important to put your flaps up so you don't look like a weirdo or a bonehead um, <laughs> when you, eh, we'll put the flaps up there we go but uh, in any event that is the iconic St. Bart's Landing. There is a video of me doing this approach and landing in St. Bart's in real life. I'll put that link in the description if you guys want to watch that. Fun landing. If you want to get consistent at it, learn to control your airspeed. Be precise with your altitudes and where you are in relation to the field. And I have a, a good friend of mine I was talking about earlier who flies this approach pretty much every day. I mean, every day that he works anyway. And he also, the, another thing I meant to share with you guys is one of the things that he says as well is that he tries this approach once. If he tries this approach and has to go around, that's it. He doesn't do it again. And last note, if uh, if the winds are favoring runway one zero but they're less than 10 knots they'll do the 2-8 approach because it's uphill you can take a little bit of a tailwind and just do the 2-8 approach and land straight in there are two separate approaches for runway 2-8 if you guys are interested i can do those as well and they require the same type of pre precision because there is no go around for runway 2-8 so you really got to be on top of it so I hope you guys enjoyed this flight today. I hope you enjoyed the look at the iconic St. Bart's approach, and I hope you guys have a great day.